Greetings, everyone, to a new chapter. And in this chapter, we're going to concentrate on what I consider to be a really important part of Photoshop Elements, and that's the organizer. Excellent program. In the previous chapter, we loaded some images. They were in the 03 chapter folder. Understand that not every single chapter we work in is going to require that we use images, and they might come from previous things that we have done. So if for whatever reason, you didn't load those images from Chapter 3. All you really have to do is remember, come up here, go into Files and Folders, and go ahead and find them. Now it remembers the last thing I did, so that's why that's there. So if you don't have them, just go ahead and load them again. Just click the Import button, boom, you've got them. Now we're not really going to do a whole lot, but we can use these images as examples as we move forward. What I want to do in this lesson is just look at the interface. Now, Elements Organizer got a major, kind of like facelift, in version 11, and it's continued through in 12. There's some new things here. The really big change came actually in version 11. Now, we know what this button is. Okay, let's kind of take a look around here. We can import files from here, even search for things if we want to. This area here will contain all of our folders and our current catalog. If we get up here, this is where the fun kind of starts. For example, we have people. Now, we don't have any yet, but what we can do is actually identify people by their names. Face recognition, that's a really cool feature. This one is my favorite, though. I love places. Being able to put things anywhere you want them to be. Now, if you have a camera that's GPS enabled, which several years ago would have been very unusual, today it's not as unusual. Well, for example, iPads and iPhones and Androids are all GPS enabled. So when you take a photograph with that device, it will appear exactly on the map where you took the image, no matter where on the planet it was. We can also, as you're going to see later, even add places down here and drag our images where they were taken. I do a lot of shooting in Wichita at the Sedgwick County Zoo. Before I got a GPS-enabled camera, I would just simply drag that stuff out there. It's kind of nice. We can also link things, and this is about organization, don't forget. We can also link things into particular events. So you have media, people, places, and events. We're going to cover all this stuff. You have a Create button over here that we could probably spend a whole day on. Photo books, greeting cards, photo calendars, collages, DVDs, just about anything that you want. You have a Share button over here, and the Share button allows you to share. Now, not only does it allow you to say, I want this photograph out on Flickr or Twitter or whatever if you've got an account, but it conforms the image to what Twitter requires for you. So it does a lot of work up ahead. All you have to do is set it up. Up here, you do have a search area. So if you've got hundreds of zillions of images and you're looking for something specific, you could go in there and actually type it in. And if you knew what you were doing, you could actually get it. Over here, all media means show me everything. We've already been there before. You also have a button. Let me go ahead and go back into our images. We can sort them by newest, oldest, by their name, or as they were imported. And you can, if you want to, give your images ratings right over here. Now, down on the bottom, we have a hide button here that gives us more real estate if we want to do that. Click it again to bring it back. My favorite button in the whole world is undo or redo. And undo allows me to undo something, which it just told me I didn't have anything to undo. We can rotate images if they're in the wrong orientation. Up to you. Add people, places, and events here, or going into these and doing it here. We can create a slideshow, and we can go into not only editor. If we click on an image and click this button, it's going to take us into Photoshop Elements automatically. But if we click here, that little button, we can choose to take that image to something else, including the big guy, Photoshop, a video editor, photo editor is Photoshop Elements, or external editor, which you can define in preferences. Over here, you've got a zoom button, which allows you to make things bigger or smaller. Up to you, your choice. Instant fix, I mentioned this in the previous chapter. These are features that are actually in Photoshop Elements, okay? They're not just here, they're in Photoshop Elements too. But they're there because, well, we use them a lot, so why do we have to go to Elements to do something like a red eye or a sharpen? We can do it right here. And the one other button you have down here is for tags and information, which we're going to get into in the next lesson. This kind of comprises, if you will, the organizer interface. And it gives you the ability to take five images or 500,000 images and organize them in a way that you can access them exactly when you need them. That's what organizer does.